Hi, everybody. Um, I am so excited for our first like official talk of the day. Um, I am thrilled to introduce Beth, who is the client relations specialist at Chartmetric. Um, Chartmetric is a company near and dear to my heart because Chartmetric has been a sponsor for all four years of Measure of Music. Um, they let me run with whatever crazy idea I have every year, um, and this year is no different. So I am thrilled to bring Beth on stage to represent Chartmetric to talk all about how this pivotal platform is used across the music industry. Beth, take it away. Hello, everyone. This is really, really exciting stuff. Um, I'm so, so glad to be with you all. And as the first official um, presentation, I'm going to do my best. And I'm so glad that you're all here with me. And um, I'm really, really excited to maybe introduce uh, chart metrics to any of you that haven't heard of our platform before. I hope you all have. I hope we have some power users and uh, uh, some fans of, of the platform. I have been a client relations specialist for chart metric for just over three months now, I think. So, and, but the, I, I guess the caveat to that introduction is that I've been in the music industry for just over eight. And I have used chart metric since day one. So to, to be working with the team now and to be officially a part of te uh, team chart metric is amazing. And I'm, I'm just so excited to really get into it today. We're going to talk about what data is, uh, what data chart metric are interested in, why we are the market leaders in not only aggregating data, but contextualizing it, creating uh, actionable insights and next steps to help us strategize and to build around our artists to make sure that not only are they succeeding, but they are connecting with their fans and that uh, that, that fan base is, is continuing to grow. Uh, and hopefully we'll have some time for, for questions too. So please feel free to, to drop those in. Um, but yeah, let's let's get started. So I'm just gonna share my screen with everybody. And apologies if we see a bit of a, a double vision at the moment. I'm hoping that, there we go. We go straight into the presentation. So I guess, before we sort of intro chart metric as a platform, it's best to take it one step back. And that is what is data? What is market data even? So of course, data is uh, something that we use all of the time, whether we know it or we don't. Some of it has been really instrumental in the music industry, for instance, whether that's uh, revenue data, or whether that's something that a, a customer supplies when they are streaming music, buying music, uh, buying tickets, merch, any of that. And that is personal user data. Both of those data sources are incredibly important and they tell us a lot, but they're confidential. They are confidential to uh, the data that is sort of being kept by revenue sources and also personal user data is confidential as well. So I guess... In between those two data points, which do provide us insight, definitely, what's in between that? And right in between those two pieces of data is something that we like to call market data. And that's the kind of data that we are focused on. I guess uh, back in the day, you know, mu the music industry has always used market data, but it it's, can sometimes be a bit slow. Yesterday's market data, uh, data could only tell us about yesterday, right? So although some of these, you know, if we think about revenue data as an instance, it's incredible to be able to look at charts, break those down and see uh, how much it took to get to a top 10 or top five or even number one position. But that is data that's telling us about something that's already happened. You've already got to that chart position. Um, so yesterday's data is, you know, sometimes a little bit outdated. It can be limited, linear, local and late. So some of those simple sources of data that gave us super uh, insightful knowledge that helped us sort of validate the decisions we'd already made. Uh, these were sort of uh, categorized into fan club memberships, tour schedules, press cuttings, radio, TV, syncs, and obviously our sales chart. All of these are really incredible data sources. But as we mentioned, they kind of tell the story of yesterday. And that's not really the, the business that Chartmetric are in. 
today's market is a lot more powerful. If we think in the past, we think about those fan club memberships or or uh, buying a, a gig ticket, uh, purchasing a CD. These are kind of the data points of the past. And sometimes consumers were only creating two data points within a year, whether that was, as we say, buying a ticket, piece of merch or, or a CD in physical format. Today, we have over 19,000 data points per consumer every single year. So we have the, the ones that we would have had in the past, but we also have these new, exciting ways of understanding how people are discovering music, consuming music, becoming more than just a listener, but a fan of an artist. And these are listens, their likes, their views, their creates on TikTok, their follows on Spotify, on Instagram, uh, their saves of posts or music, their shares. There are an infinite amount of ways of, of engaging with music, discovering with it and, and consuming it. But of course, that's a lot of data to, uh, to, to figure out, to manage. And I guess most importantly, to contextualize, how can we use this data to better add value to our artists and to the music industry? And on top of all of those additional data points, we also have this incredibly exciting, borderless marketplace now. Audiences are global, and that is really, really exciting. We know now that an artist could record a song in London and she could end up being one of the uh, biggest artists in the world, thinking about artists like Pink Panthress or, or Dua Lipa. So it's it's an incredible time for artists and it's an incredible time for fans and consumers of music to have a real borderless and global access to the marketplace. Now, I we can totally understand that all of that sounds amazing, it sounds great, but how can we quantify all of that into one place that kind of not only aggregates all of this information, but you're able to join the dots together. You can join data together to tell compelling stories, whether in the past, in the present, or hopefully to help you strategize for the future. So but this is kind of where chart metric comes in. We are incredible at providing sort of actionable knowledge and insights by integrating data from pretty much every service and social that you can think of. We have a few listed here. It's amazing now that people can consume music on streaming services, but it doesn't need to stop there. We can find out a little bit more about the artists through their socials. We can even create, uh, we can create video format in short form content uh, format through TikTok, through Instagram Reels, through YouTube Shorts. There's lots of different ways that we can be interacting with music and also that our artists can be uh, interacting with their fans on. So Chartmetric like to be the person, the reliable source that can aggregate all of those services, all of those socials, all of those data points, and really, really help us contextualize. So I guess who uses Chartmetric? It may seem like a, a maybe a simple question. The music industry uses Chartmetric, right? But there are so many uh, different sectors and parts of the music industry that all seem to work together to help an artist. Not only this, but it's not just a, a record label as such that we can think of as someone that would use this data now. We have managers, we have live agents, we have uh, promoters and pluggers, we have uh, journalists. There are lots of different people that are all over the music industry and maybe just outside that too, that are finding chart metric not only useful, but absolutely pivotal to uh, helping understand the landscape, understanding the business, understanding how they're going to strategize to move forward. So Chartmetric has been used by over 4,000 organizations across the music industry. Here we can kind of see some that I, I mentioned there from artists themselves, labels, distributors, publishers, management services, industry organizations and trade unions, live sector, services and apps, 
online media, curators and journalists, radio, TV, movie and games and sync, brands and advertising, but also the financial sector and also our educational sector as well. So this is where we jump into chart metric in action. We kind of know why chart metric exists. We know why it's the uh, leading platform in aggregating and contextualizing data. How can we know who uses it? How can we see that in action? So the first place that I'd uh, like to, to talk about or show everyone today is how that you can use chart metric to really understand your audience, understand acquisition, retention, marketing, being able to use chart metric to get detailed insights into your audience's reach, your engagement, how they are being supported by DSPs, what their strength on social networks looks like. And not only this, but what is the next step? How can we use this information to strategize where we are, where we'd like to be, and how we can use data and insight to get us there. The second place where we really see chart metric in action is the uh, borderless sort of globalization of consuming music. We are a platform that is able to jump into territory specific consumption of music, uh, whether it's understanding an artist's biggest markets, whether that's varying across uh, DSPs and, and maybe social medias. Um, but we're also uh, able to help add insight, whether you're creating content to engage with a global audience, it's a, a localized marketing campaign, or developing media and brand partnerships that make sense. Chart metric are the platform to help you expand your audience, understand your audience, and also that the value that they have. Now, the third case in which we can really see chart metric in action is our access to the amount of playlists, radio stations, news sources that we are following and, and, and supplying data, uh, they're supplying data into chart metric for. We're able to find exactly where you need to be and how to get where you need to be. We're able to uncover the most impactful playlists, whether that's specific to a territory, whether it's to do with uh, a, a really established artist or maybe a breakthrough artist. We're able to really understand who the tastemakers are behind some of um, an artist's sort of biggest songs or creations or, you know, who are the people that are really supporting and following that artist. And not only that, they are, uh, influencing other people to like that artist as well. Again, not only social media, but radio too. How does the charts, Airplay, Shazam work together on a global scale to help tell really impactful stories? We all know that as much as uh, we love our plans to go, uh, to go accordingly, you never know where a, a, uh, you could really get that spark for an artist, whether it's a song, an artist, whether it's because of a, a touring or live or sync moment. We can really start an artist campaign from anywhere in the world. It doesn't necessarily need to be where the artist's home territory is at. That is such an exciting time. And we're so proud as a platform to be able to support all uh, areas of the world and all parts of the team that are supporting that artist as well. So the next place where we really see chart metric in action is our data informed a and &R. Now we know that a &Rs are uh, incredibly important in the music industry. Back in the day, you would, uh, you would have A&Rs sort of be, being told that they've had magic ears or, or uh, that it was really great gut feelings. And there is no doubt that your ears and your guts can tell you uh, a lot about how you feel about a track, how you feel about an artist and where you can really see them growing and becoming a champion of them from, from an early stage. But I tell you what is, uh, what is even better when you can match your guts and your instinct with data so that we have got a, a really holistically informed 
um, strategic approach to making a decision uh, and to championing and working with certain artists. So chart metric are able to provide the insights that enable a &Rs around the world to make these gut decisions. So whether it's new artists, trending artists, artists that are building strong audience engagements on social platforms or on, on uh, other different platforms, our tools and insights are able to help you discover those artists and those tracks. Not only that, but make decisions before other competitors are even aware that those incredible artists exist. And here are all of the partners that we are super, super lucky to work with. Um, all varying, varying scales, but it's great to see some of the, the real stakeholders of the music industry as part of uh, the Chartmetric platform. And we sort of uh, are supplying data or getting data supplied to us from some of these platforms. And we know that some of these platforms uh, uh, see Chartmetric as a really, really pivotal part of their business. So that is chart metric that's what we are that's uh what we do how you can use us in action um and i guess shows you why we're really great at what we do as well um and now i would love i don't know if there's any questions that i can answer from our comment section on that on the data in in general and chart metric as a platform but after that i would love to quickly jump into the platform show you some really really cool ways that uh, data is fueling the music industry and helping our gut and our love for music be paired with data and insight and information so that we know um, that the decisions we're making are super, super informed. Um, so I'm just going to have a little look at the questions. Okay, here we go. Can you compare artist data to your artists? Yeah, you can. Um, I'm excited to let me note that down so that we can definitely uh, look into our uh, comparison tool. We have, a, we have a couple of different versions of ways you could do that. There's one called the comparison tool, which is perfect. Um, and are you able to figure out where fans are from through social media? Absolutely. Um, this is something that we do incredibly well. And I think what's really exciting about Chartmetric, and we'll get into that, is not only do we uh, collect the demographic data from some of your artists' uh, platforms, whether that's the social media, DSPs, or YouTube, but we can bring all that together to kind of give you an overall audience demographic as well, um, which I find extremely helpful. Not only that, but it's super interesting to understand your overall demographic information and data and then jump into your YouTube, your Instagram or, or Spotify, and you're able to maybe get a little bit skewed differently, that really informs us as to who is consuming our content and our music on these different apps. And maybe it helps inform us, uh, you know, how we can adjust our, our marketing, whether in real life or digital or advertising, to be able to uh, cater very specifically to the different audiences that we're starting to appear on different services. Um, and do you provide API access? We absolutely do. And I would really encourage you to um, reach out to me after this, or if you um, are already uh, signed up to Chartmetric, if you just see our chat box button, it should be here on Chartmetric. Uh, you should be able to literally ask and inquire about our API access, and we'll be able to give you a lot more information about that. Um, okay, great presentation. This may be better. Okay, let me read the question first. Unique ways that you, mm, individuals utilizing chart metric. This is a great question. Uh, and I think the best ways are actually the ways that I'm going to show you today. Um, and that uh, really comes from the data that we get that can help inform uh, the next step uh, of our decision making from brand affinity to playlist journeys um, to our A&R tool. These are all ways in which data is helping us, um, helping us sort of inform really unique ways that the platform is, is becoming really, really uh, instrumental in people's decisions. Um, and predicting the success of certain tracks or forecast audience engagement. 
So I think there are probably different ways that you could do that on the chart metric platform. We are not in, as I mentioned, we're not really in the business of sharing any real personal customer data or revenue data. So we don't predict or divulge any of those. We don't get them either, <laughs> but we do, uh, we're not really in the business of those two. So in terms of prediction, we can definitely uh, use some of our data and predictions to understand uh, you know, whether an artist has really got a piece of, uh, like a bit of momentum behind them. Is it because of there's a piece of content on TikTok that has gone viral, that has spiked um, uh, Spotify followers, has a catalog track, suddenly had a big sync moment, and you can suddenly start seeing the creates come on TikTok. The Spotify uh, organic streams start to go up. The playlist ads start to go up. You can really start to um, use data to definitely forecast what is happening with the track and therefore how we can be strategic about amplifying that for sure. Uh, do we provide data for academic music data research? I, since joining Chartmetric, I've been, um, I'm, I'm just so uh, happy, I guess. There's definitely a better word than that um, with, how much uh, we are supporting some of the, the biggest sort of universities in the world. It's, it's incredible to see students be so engaged with a platform like Chartmetric and knowing that um, they, are, they are just, yeah, the future of the music industry. So anything that we can do to help support uh, academic music data and research, We'd absolutely love to. So again, please feel free to reach out to me directly or if you reach out via the Chartmetric app and you see our little um, chat box, one of us will get back to you. Um, yes, I will definitely get into how brands are, are using the platform. Um, and yes, we have our thank you so much for bringing up our certification uh, course as well. My colleague Dom uh, put that together and it's been incredible to see how many people have, have jumped on that um, again please feel free to to reach out to me and the team about um, jumping into the certification course you're able to uh, answer just a, a, a few questions that test your usage and your capabilities on chart metric and you're able to um, if you pass get a, a badge like a LinkedIn learning badge and um, it's something we're really really proud of uh, how should a day one artist leverage chart metric? Um, yeah, I, I totally hear that, that they won't have much art out there to analyze. That's super interesting. Um, we have an artist plan uh, for chart metric. It's a plan that is dedicated to uh, artists. It allows you to really get into your data. Um, you're able to follow a couple of others too, so that maybe you could do some comparison. A way that I found day one artist to use it is, one, understanding where you are, and then using some of the capabilities of uh, the comparison tool to see where an artist that is maybe similar to you, you know, how are you differing? Where is your strong suits? Where are their strong suits? And then being able to dig into that to see how maybe someone of a similar genre or a similar level of status are interacting with their audience. Is there anything that uh, feels similar or inspiring to you? Um, so yeah, I would definitely say that. And of course, when it comes into when you're in sort of album cycle and um, you're creating content or you're releasing music, uh, this is a great place to be able to understand how that music or how that content is, is performing and how people are interacting with it. Would you recommend using Chartmetric for an artist that is currently? Yeah, definitely. I think it's an incredible place to um, uh, really get started in data as well. Sometimes the word data can feel a little bit elusive or overwhelming. Um, so what a great place to start with uh, starting to understand and dig into data or on Chartmetric by using your own. Um, I, I, yeah, I would definitely, definitely say that it's, it's, uh, it's great for an artist at, at any stage. Uh, what is the best function of the platform to help strategize next steps for artists? So there's definitely a few places. And as mentioned in some of our other questions, um, we'll, we'll kind of go through those and, and hopefully we can answer any other questions that we have. 
Uh, do we have data from small regions or countries such as Jamaica? Absolutely, we do. We try and be as global as possible, bringing in not only uh, sort of geographical, locational data from territories all over the world, but also we, we are really, really, um, we think it's really, really important to be uh, bringing in data from different platforms that are maybe more preferred or or most popular in certain territories, whether that's Audio Mac or Boomplay or, you know, we, we are really trying to bring in data from everywhere that we can in order to match the marketplace in being as global and borderless as possible. Uh, we also do this for our radio stations. We track a lot of radio stations around the world. Um, but we are also aware that we, we, you know, we don't know everything and we really, really love and appreciate our partners letting us know or flagging if there's a certain DSP or content provider, brand, uh, news outlet, radio station that we are not uh, tracking. And we would be super open to, to tracking that. We're a platform for the music industry. So however we can be valuable, we want to be. Uh, do you provide historical data for radio and TV too? We do indeed. Um, radio and TV data, we are able to, to provide historical um, uh, data on. And does the platform give inset, uh, insights on the fans' interests? So we can understand a little bit more about our fans through demographic, through brand affinity, um, and through uh, also through content as well. What content is are our fans creating on platforms like TikTok? How do they uh, give us insight into what content they like, what other artists they like, what brands they're consuming. Um, any API questions, feel free to, to reach out to me afterwards for sure. Um, yeah, a couple of APIs there, really exciting. Hope we hear from you. Uh, see any metrics that help uh, us see their super fan size? Absolutely, yeah, we will definitely get into that. Um, but yes, that is, we are in the business of, of uh, metrics for our fans and their super fans too. And I know that the idea of super fans is, is super important. So um, yes. And can chart metrics show the latest music trends as they happen? Yes. And I'm going to be as bold as to say that we see them before they happen, um, which, is, which is why chart metric is, is so great. Uh, how does chart metric differ from sound charts and other similar platforms? We are one of the leading uh, sort of aggregators of all places. I mean, you know, there are there are other platforms out there, but Chartmetric are definitely sort of the best in terms of not only the amount of data that we can bring in, the efficiency of that, um, but also the, uh, I would say, our kind of reactiveness to what the what the market needs. That's what we're in the business of. We want to be valuable. We want to be helpful. We want to be insightful. So there are other platforms that can bring in lots of data, but we join all that data together and we help contextualize it in a way that we hope brings you infinite amounts of insight, but also helps you strategize for, for the next step too. Um if any do you capture on yeah live music attendance this is a also a great question so we do track live music uh i believe we are getting data from seat geek uh also song kick um and they help tell sort of where artists are touring so on our artist page which i will hurry up and and jump us into um so you can understand where an artist is touring, but if you jump into country data, you can also see what artists are touring there too. And we're hoping to um, update this uh, this live music sort of attendance gigs information really soon. And I'm, I'm super excited for that update too. Um, get you data and additional, yes, Ben, absolutely. Anything that you think is helpful in terms of providing additional um, categories, we so appreciate you and we appreciate, um, yeah, any additional value that we can add to our, our community. Um, so, yes, absolutely. Just going to pause on the questions because I get a little bit uh, carried away. 
Um, so let me share my screen. Let's quickly jump into a uh, chart metric so I can just show you some of those places that we uh, that we went to or uh, that we spoke about in, in some of the questions. And as mentioned, please, please feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to um, be able to offer any kind of trials if people are new to the platform. If you're an existing um, member of Chartmetric and want to dig a bit deeper, please feel free to reach out. I'd be more than happy um, to, to chat and, and talk about data and music. It's my favorite. <laughs> uh, so let's quickly go into Chartmetric. Let me do my entire screen. Okay, so this is Chartmetric. Uh, so when you kind of sign in, this is your, your dashboard page. Um, you're able to follow uh, a, a sort of lots and lots of artists, your favorite artists, maybe artists you manage, artists you um, have your eye on, uh, artists that uh, are on your record label, artists that are sort of neighboring to the, the artists that you are in your genre or in your status. And we're able to get snapshots of data here. We're able to kind of... Um, rank these data to, to help us tell uh, different kinds of stories. And we're able to add shortlists too, which is really exciting. We can group some of our artists together. We can see tracks, we can see albums, we can see playlists and curators. We can also see some of our artist insights. So if you're following your own artist page and you hit a milestone, you'll never miss it. It will appear straight away on your chart metric dashboard, cross platforms. So I love to just introduce everybody to this page if you're new to Chartmetric. It also really takes you to our, um, really easy to take you to some of the other places that uh, Chartmetric are offering information, including our How Music Charts site. Our data research team are amazing. And I believe uh, my colleague Sarah is doing um, a bit of our year-end report, getting into our year-end report on Sunday. So I hope everybody enjoys that. It's going to be incredible. So we can then jump into, let's jump into an artist page. Um, so this is Bad Bunny. Don't know if anyone's ever heard of him before. He's pretty big. Uh, and I guess Bad Bunny is a great profile for us to bring up and be able to jump into some of these because his data sources are incredible. Over here on the right, we're only as good as the data that we are, are, are linking up to, to our chart metric page as well. All of the chart metric data is looking great there. So we know that um, this information is going to be perfect and holistic. So a way in which chart metric are able to really use our power as a, a aggregator of all of this data is again, joining it together and contextualizing it. So one of these is our, the different kind of scales and scores that chart metric uh, uh, create. So we can see them here. We have our career stage, recent momentum, network strength, and social engagement. And if you click on information, this will give you a, a bit more of an in-depth um, as to where we're getting some of these data points from and also what your score can tell you about where you're at. But this is a really, really unique uh, way that Chartmetric are able to give you an oversight straight away as to where you're at. So now in our artist overview, we can start seeing some other really cool bits of data. Social footprints, primary markets, primary uh, genders and uh, primary ages too. Start seeing some of our top stats, playlists, top tracks, and really excitingly, our fan base comparison too. So here, we're really able to understand what fans or what whereabouts uh, the strongest followerships are really leading the charge in our fan base. This is super, super interesting. It's interesting to see the, differ the differings in followership as well. We can see Spotify is absolutely leading the charge. And as an artist, it's pretty great that the biggest sort of followers that Bad Bunny has are the ones that are going to be notified straight away when a song comes out. It's no surprise that YouTube is coming in uh, second there. Bad Bunny's music videos are incredible. Uh, and we know that he shows a lot of love, time, care um, into his YouTube channel. So amazing, again, 
to see that uh, people that subscribe are going to be the first to know about new music videos and content too. Uh, so yeah, we start to get a little bit more of an understanding of, of our audience there and, and comparing them together, importantly. Uh, we've got our in the news category here. So this is where we're able to pull in some of the most uh, read or most viewed articles, different places where Bad Bunny has been in the news recently. And then we get into our artist collaborations. This is a really, really smart way that Chartmetric are using data to be able to uh, tell us what the impact is on an artist and on the collaborator when a single comes out with um, more than one artist on it. For instance, we can see that. So we can see on this track, right here this might be the best one to use i'm wondering if there's another one uh oh this is interesting travis scott okay so we can see that when bad bunny and travis scott did uh their track uh k-pop that actually there may not have been a significant impact on bad bunny's uh audience but travis scott he had a 61, over 61% increase in his uh, audience. And that was just because he collaborated with Bad Bunny. So it's interesting to not only see, we all know the power of uh, cross collaboration, especially with artists on tracks, but how interesting to actually see the impact of that once the track has come out. This is the same with um, uh, uh, DJs as well. Maybe a, an artist like Fred again would be a, a good artist to look at. He collaborates with a lot of people. Not only did uh, how did that um, song or album affect the artist, how did it infect the, the collaborator too? This is another really interesting one too. On one of the tracks that Bad Bunny was featured on, you know, he had a little bit of an uptick in his artist score, but the impact on the collaborator that was also on the track, Grupo, over a 190% increase, absolutely incredible. So this is a great way for us to really understand um, our, our impact and on uh, tracks with multiple collaborators. And I really encourage people to, to jump into this if you have any, if you've been featured on a track or if you're, um, you're interested in, in, in seeing the power of cross promotion and collaboration. Uh, at the bottom of our over artist overview page on Chartmetric, we see fans also like. So this is using data to tell us what our neighboring artists are, what artists that um, our, our fans are also interested in. This helps us in, in many different ways. Uh, let's jump straight to audience. This is our audience page. As I mentioned, Chartmetric have got a really, really smart way of being able to aggregate all of these or combining, sorry, all of our different audiences on different platforms and telling us what our combined audience size is. We're able to see the breakdown. And if you click on these, it's going to take you into a really in-depth tab that we have that will tell you more about your uh, artist on each of these platforms. But here's our audience demographic. As mentioned, this is the overall audience. So across all four of these platforms, this is what our audience is looking like. However, we can dig a little bit deeper. And as I mentioned, it's interesting to see some of these differ, if only slightly, can really help us understand what our audiences are on different platforms and knowing that sometimes they are a bit different. Look at that, YouTube. The only platform that is a, a majority male audience. Interesting, really interesting. I'm so sorry, Beth, but I have to wrap you up. <laughs> I, I knew I was going to go over. I knew it. Um, well, that's our comparison tool. That's our sort of audience breakthrough. And if there's any other questions that anyone's got, please feel free to reach out to me and maybe we can hop on and, and do something one to one. 
Thank you so much, Beth. Um, participants, you are going to have access to Chartmetric for the full weekend to work on your project. So hopefully you were inspired by all the things you saw here. Beth, I know there is literally so much to show in Chartmetric that I know you yeah. just had the service. But yeah. thank you so, so much for the time. I am sad to have had to cut you off because I know there's so much more to be seen. Oh, um, so good. But please, 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 you guys check out Chartmetric. Um, there's past presentations that you can watch as well on YouTube. And um, participants, I've dropped those links for you in the data folder as well. Um, and with that, we are going to wrap up. Thank you so much, Beth, for your time. Um, thank you, everyone, for watching. And we're going to hop over to the next talk. Thanks, everyone.